We should be live. Come on, Michael. We Yo, are Dave's not here, man. Dave's <laughs> not here. Really. Dave, Dave. Shoot, you're kidding. We're live. Hang on. Okay, Dave's here. <laughs> uh, never stops being funny, Dave. Never. You know, it's the nice thing about being me is I constantly amuse myself. <laughs> Nobody else buys into it, but I'm there. <laughs> hey, good Friday, everybody. It's Friday Pie Day or Dramas and with Dave Rush, Ask Me Anything, and Scott. Drama A's, drama S. <laughs> <laughs> drama plus S. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hey, there's only a few people here, so I'm going to hold this off, but I'm going to give you guys a heads up right now. We have a huge announcement coming today. Call your friends, call your neighbors, email everybody you know from the feed. They need to know what's cooking today. But in the meantime, hi, Scott. Hi, Dave. How are you? I am well. How about yourself? Doing great. You ready for a good three-day weekend? I... <laughs> <laughs> You mean so that I can tackle all the projects that I don't get finished during the week? Exactly. <laughs> the whole COVID thing means, okay, that's just another day to work from home as if we were going away anyways. Exactly. Hope all you guys who are celebrating a, a holiday this coming Monday have a, a good weekend plan and stay home or travel safely, do whatever you're going to do. What I would do if I were you is I would have received my pie by Saturday and start projecting. You've got an entire Monday. Tell the family to leave you alone and start cooking at it. <laughs> oh, tell it, you're such a card. Yeah, thank goodness. Free pie. <laughs> well, no, the announcement is not a free pie. <laughs> it's no free pie. Hey, well, pick it's instead. Friday. We're here as we are every day or once a week to uh, do the third session AMA of the week. We do this, we get together uh, to talk about CompTIA information about Raspberry Pis, how they couple together, how they couple apart. Let's just do some really cool Raspberry Pi stuff. We're all kind of stuck at home because of uh, the pandemic that seems to be kind of working its way down little by little. So fingers crossed and prayers or whatever you're into. We have a lot of neat stuff to talk about. We've got a lot of neat stuff for you. So I'm going to ask Scott to talk about himself and talk a little bit about what the uh, What's going on with Total Seminars for you guys? All right, so uh, the AMAs um, that we do are because we're stuck from home uh, and you're stuck from home studying for the CompTIA exams or just wanna hang out and talk tech with some fellow, fellow nerds. Um, uh, I'm Scott Jernigan. I'm editor in chief for Total Seminars. I write and edit and produce all kinds of stuff with Mike Myers, our company president including, uh, well, all of his books for the last 20 years. So there you go. Uh, I'm also an instructor and uh, a, a life, lifelong technician. So that's where, that's where I'm at. There you go. And I am Dave Rush. I also work for Total Seminars. This is a Total Seminars AMA. So I'm going to remind everybody, ask us questions. Ask us anything. Whether we're talking about CompTIA, whether we're talking about pies, whether we're talking about the weather, Anything pretty much but religion and politics is fair game. Uh, if you post a question on there today and we don't get to it, there's every chance because of the way YouTube does things that it slid by and we missed it. Scott's really good about uh, catching that stuff. But if, you, uh, if your question gets missed, ask it again. And if you've got a question that you don't want to put up there or it's getting toward the end of the session or it's going to take a horrifically long time to answer, whatever the case may be, we would encourage you to write us looking for my extender page. <laughs> Does that, that's all right. I I'm swiping right right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm flipping that Go back over here. Oops. <laughs> I turned my monitor off. That's one way to go. Didn't know you could do that. Yeah, filling for us. Oh, there it is. My okay. Like I said, man, I like Zoom, but I hate Zoom. Goodness gracious, they make it challenging. All right, there we go. So if you want to talk to us, send us an email. You can find me at Dave R at Total Sim or Scott at Scott J at TotalSim.com. There's my personal email. By all means, feel free to use that. I've gotten emails on both from lots of folks on here. Don't send it to both. They cross contact each other. Uh, I'm going to game a little bit on Monday. And Scott doesn't have time, but you'll find me uh, 
doing a couple of games on Steam, so catch me there as Blood Rush TX or find Scott. If he does manage to get a break, you'll find him playing Civ or Conan or he's not wowing anymore, which is really weird because on all the forums that I, I work on that have reference to you and Mike, uh, because of some of the, the information that we've given in video courses and things like that, how can I find you on WoW? And are you Horde or are you... <laughs> If you have this desperate need to speak with us face-to-face, -face, you can try. Give this number a call, 281-922-4166. Nobody's there at the office to man those, but they are forwarded uh, to our people, real people. It's not an answering service or anything like that. Well, not unless it's the middle of the night. Uh, and if you convince them, they will find a way to get you in touch with us. But otherwise, emails are the quickest and bestest for long answer stuff and for short answer uh, it's Throw a question up here in chat. You know that. Senior Scott, tell yeah. them what we can do for them. So just because you're here in the AMA, we have a special deal for this week that runs through Monday uh, or through Sunday, I should say, uh, that 50% off all of our A plus and Network Plus Super Bundles. Those are the videos plus practice tests plus simulations. So that's for A plus and net plus and uh, the security plus video and, and total tester bundle. Just use the code MMLive831 at checkout at totalsim.com. Uh, this is a great deal, folks. Um, and it, almost for sure it will change coming Monday. So if you have a need for any of this stuff, I would jump on it. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, let's see what's happening in Uncle Notes. Man, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I had this thing in mind for us. We've got two things to do today, and they're going to be really quick things. And I don't, I don't think we get enough questions to pull through the whole four hours. So I was kind of trying to, to build a little bit of a, a good, interesting fill-in thing. And I found something that was so cool. Uh, and, and I've had it on my notes and my uh, outlines for days. And I looked at it last night when I was doing final prep. And uh, I said, you know what, that is just way too deep and too involved and too complicated. So starting around 11 o'clock last night, I started writing a, a fresh new introductory thing that'll help us build into that. So I have just cooked. I, eyes are drooping down to my mustache. And <laughs> but I have just cool stuff for you today. Uh, I want to remind everybody, so we do Raspberry Pi here, um, and everything we do, of course, is Raspberry Pi, but you don't have to have a Raspberry Pi to do a lot of the things that we're doing today, or in many of the other days. If you want to set up a Kodi server, if you want to set up a Plex server, uh, an SSH machine, Wireshark, many of the other things that we've done here, they go great on a Windows machine, excuse me, they go great in a Ubuntu or other Linux VM. Most of them go great on a Mac machine. Uh, so by all means, if, if you don't have a Pi and you want to do some of this stuff, you certainly can. And we'll be glad they, to help out if you get good. Yeah, the, the, the key, uh, we're using the Pi because it's fun and it's an inexpensive and, and very cool all-in-one uh, device uh, that you can pick up for $35. And it's a full full-blown computer, which is awesome. But the key for CompTIA A+, Net+, Security+, certification training is the Pi runs Linux. So since Linux is a part of what you need to know as a tech, definitely need to know as a tech in the modern world, uh, it's just a good, a good excuse for us to bring Linux to you. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, as, as everybody knows, I am just a Pi fanatic. So after I started playing with them for a couple of years, I went to Scott and to Mike and some of the other senior folks at Total and said, hey, I would like to integrate the Pi into much of what we do. And I got kind of mixed results. And so working on my own in the evenings and weekends and things like that, I came up with some tools and techniques and processes and brought them back and said, here's what we could do. And everybody said, wow, the value of the Pi, here we go. So hope you feel the same way. So let's do a quick recap where we've been. Okay where we're going and we'll take some questions and then we'll get started on some stuff for today. So two weeks ago, we went through the steps of installing a Kodi media server on a Raspberry Pi. 
because of the limitations of VNC and Zoom and all that good stuff, all I could do is walk you, talk you through the steps. Uh, and then in the meantime, I installed one on a PC because I could show you that one in real time. Right. And uh, we did a quick tour of it. So it looks and works exactly the same thing when you install it on a Pi or when you install it on any other box, even Android. So once it's installed, I, I could have lied to you and said, hey, so here it is on the Pi, but that's just not my way. I lie to you about uh, more important things that get me, you know, <laughs> advantage in life. <laughs> uh, also, just by way of review, then last week, we installed a Plex media server on a Raspberry Pi. We actually saw that, walked through the process, and it was on a Pi 3B. And I want to talk a little bit about that as uh, we go on today. And as we do every day, I think, or every week, I'm kind of starting to, to come up with a name for this feature, uh, Protocol of the Week. Every week, almost since we've gotten started, we've fired up Wireshark and taken a look at a capture of some popular protocol or some protocol that we have to know for A+, plus or Net+, plus or even Sec+. Plus. So we did SSH doing port 22 and Telnet doing port 23 and so forth. Uh, last week, we took a a look at an attempt to do a live capture of a DHCP request and assignment. Doesn't work well in my network configuration, but that was cool because then we learned that we could download capture and saved files that other people have done. So and those are called PCAP files and you can get them from wiki.wireshark.org. So I'm gonna do that again today. We're gonna try and do a capture of some process and if it gags, I think it's gonna go fine then I got a PCAP file ready to go. All right. So that's Sounds where great. we've been. All right. Where we're going. In keeping with our record of protocol of the week, we're going to look at DNS today and be thinking about what that port number is uh, the DNS protocol uses, which port, and maybe even go nuts and find out if it's uh, UDP or TCP, if you don't know off the top of your head. You will not need to know that for the exams. They ask about port numbers. They don't ask about if it's a TCP or UDP. After we get done with that, I want to do a little bit deeper tour of the Plex server. I want to show you a couple things that I've learned this week about Plex. And then, of course, the big, big feature for today is integrating Plex and Kodi. And I think that's all going to go amazingly fast. I have more to say than there is to do. We could do the whole thing in under a minute. Uh, that would be very fast. Take a little bit <laughs> so thanks. Uh, if it all goes so fast and we got a lot of time to kill, I'm going to start probably a three-part series today, uh, bash scripting. So we'll do an introduction of bash scripting. If it doesn't happen today, we start it again next week. OK, sounds good. So what's going on on the feed? Let's check in. Hail, hail, gang's all here. That's right. Greg Davis, first person in. Excellent. <laughs> and proudly says so. That's right. I like that. I, I love the contest of being first in or last out or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I confess I'm usually last out. Yeah. I see all the little, the little feed things even well after 4 o'clock. And, and Exactly. You've got to capture and, notes uh, and be ready to answer questions when we start up again. Just for clarification, when Dave dropped the four-hour bomb, we're only going to run two hours, so just, yeah. Did I say four hours? <laughs> wow. Yeah, you said four, and we were all like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, it's, it ain't going to be four for me. <laughs> we'll do that still ending thing. I'll just hold the smile and. That's right. Our, two hours. <laughs> our awkward ending. <laughs> <laughs> Where Andy STL put it, uh, condensed to two hours. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Oh, well, if you play it at double speed, it's only two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so Brendan S. is here. He is. Hello, Brendan. Mike Good Myers. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually very happy that Mike is, is back. Man. Uh, uh, so those of you who, yeah, I think you all know who Mike Myers is, uh, company, company president, author of uh, a zillion uh, best-selling certification titles. Um, he's took the entire month of August off and tried desperately and failed to uh, log in from wherever he was. He ended up being in these, who knew that in the middle of Yellowstone National Park up in wherever it is, Montana, 
Where is Yellowstone? Well, I saw that he attempted to put uh, an antenna on some moose antlers that were <laughs> heading away fast, but. Yeah, but you know, those Dorito cans or those uh, Pringles cans just don't, they don't, they don't look so pretty on moose horns. Yeah, well, and hooking a wire to the moose was a real challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you get chasing him around with his laptop. Yeah, it's just not. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. Right. So Mike was pretty much unable to connect for a month. <laughs> and uh, Dave and I valiantly filled in for his his regular AMAs and certainly then uh, rolled into the Friday Pie Days uh, with uh, aplomb, I guess you could say. And that was something I wanted to mention. Uh, we talked with Mike this morning. We do, you know, as we do every day with these uh, morning meetings and things like that on Zoom. Uh, and I asked him if he had planned to do the Monday session here since it is a holiday for us on Monday. He will be here regular time, right. uh, two o'clock to four o'clock central. He's not gonna do, that's why I said four hours because I was thinking four o'clock closure. Uh, Mike will be here two to four on Monday. He's not doing a feature presentation. It's just wide open questions. So load up on questions. Somebody said last on the Wednesday show, Thank God you're back, Mike. I got 12 questions in the magazine for you. <laughs> Spent most of the session kicking them off one by one. So by all that means, do that. It was elbow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you, Andre, for the clarification. Uh, Yellowstone is, is, yes, it's in Montana, but it's also in Wyoming and it's in Idaho. So it's one big place. All I know is in Hanna-Barbera, it's Jellystone. And... <laughs> <laughs> hey, boo-boo. Yeah. How's Curd? Any giveaways today? We have talked about giveaways here. It's kind of a challenge because to make it fair, um, well, I mean, the kind of thing we would give away would be a pie or something like that because everything else you can download on your own. And so if we try to make that fair for us to ship a pie uh, beyond the, the U.S. borders is really hard. So we're brainstorming to come up with some kind of giveaway program. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to, uh, with our big announcement, I will talk to uh, the people involved in that, maybe they can do something with us. That would be fun. Because Dr. Sanger sure did. He set the bar high. <laughs> he did. Uh, and for those of you who weren't on the uh, AMA with Mike and Dr. James Sanger, Stanger from CompTIA, that's a, that was a rollicking session. It's uh, several weeks ago. Um, all of our sessions on YouTube are uh, cataloged. They have pictures. They have we're about to have a, an index, a searchable index for everything that uh, is one of Dave's great projects. And we're uh, just looking at delivery at this point. I'm going to finish it as soon as you finish the SEC plus. <laughs> <laughs> Andre's already giving me <laughs> grief about not finishing those yet. Yes, Andre's here. So we, we can expect feedback <laughs> on that. <laughs> so, and, and for the record, I'm working on the security plus simulations that will go along with the A plus and net plus simulations to help you pr uh, prepare for the performance based questions on the CompTIA exams. So, but I'm working on them. I'm not done. Our, our schedule was got just like everybody's schedule got turned on its ear when we all went into lockdown several months ago. So we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. So who else is here? Well, Greg I think you got a, there's here. three questions or three posts in a row from Yunker Synops. Okay. I hope that that's some kind of really cool thing and, and Synapse isn't just a, a great last name, but if not, I'll let you target that's that what guy. it's all about. Yeah. So 204, um, if you don't have the timestamps turned on, if you just hit the little uh, vertical ellipses, you can turn those on because I'll call out questions by their time. So you can, you can scroll back up and see what we're actually looking at. If you also, are. Scott is really smart. So when he says vertical ellipses for the rest of us who aren't as smart, that's the three dots at the top that are stacked on top of each other. <laughs> ah, yes, that's right. The, the stacked <laughs> three dots, top top right. Um, anyway, you can turn the timestamp on and be able to follow along. So at 204, Yonkers Synapse says, what would you suggest for going for to security, security plus or network plus? Uh, I tell what's answer I thought was great. That's what uh, I got highlighted. Yeah. Uh, so the, the usual the usual process for getting Security Plus certified, you can you can just okay if you are going into security because that's not that's what you asked, not getting Security Plus certified. The usual way 
uh, is to get Network Plus certified, or at least go through the training for it, and then get Security Plus certified. That's kind of the foundational uh, networking and security information that you need to be able to layer on top of that any specialized security training. Like, so if you want to be a security administrator, for example, uh, going into CYSA Plus, which is also a CompT exam, you want to be a pen tester where you're wearing a white hat and you're testing people's networks to protect them from bad guys. Uh, pen test plus uh, is a good is a good direction after security plus. You can also then jump into non-security, non-CompTIA certifications, such as certified ethical hacker. Um, and there's a ton. At the top of the food chain is CISSP. That has a several years work requirement on top of on top of the certification or as part of the certification. So you can't just get it. You need to actually be in the field for several years and, and then be able to say, yeah, I've got the experience. I can I can make the, do this test. And that's that's the top of the game. But start with it, Network Plus, then Security Plus. If you are lacking some of the computer fundamentals, then A plus is a good starting point because it net plus layers on top of that very nicely. Right. Very good, Scott. Yeah. So always for just about anybody looking for a, a career in the, the field, the initial three certifications are 99% for everybody, A plus, net plus, security plus, and then specialized. It's not perfect for everybody, but it's going to fit a lot of hands. Yep. Good answer, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I set the stage and Andre hit up on Sec Plus Sims. Yeah, he did. <laughs> hey, listen, okay, so Tulloweth, Python. Yeah, 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 because I blew it for four hours. Let me tell you what I know, what I learned last year about Athons. We got a little organization here and we were going to throw a, a swim Athon. And this actually happened a year ago, it wasn't last year, when we got a cease and desist order in calling anything a thon. There is some outfit that owns the trademark to the term a thon. And they threatened to sue our little swim a thon community pool event. Uh, it's weird. And how can that be? So I'm going to rename it Python, not Pi a thon. <laughs> I like it. And then you get sued by the Python people. So, you know, that'll be good. <laughs> And everybody uh, jumped on on your uh, DNS. Andy being yes. first out with four five, 53. Andy and Az both hit fifty three. Uh, I like Taco Taco. Way to commit. UDP question mark. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, UDP is the answer. Yeah, is. So this is unusual. We talk about uh, oftentimes in the regular AMAs which ones are UDP and which ones are TCP. And when we do that kind of a top of the head type thing is. There's only one or two UDPs, but as I've been doing these over the last couple of weeks, I'm reminded how many more than we think of that right. are UDP that, that we don't say at the time. Yeah, I, I just, about it. Yeah, so so many. I've actually seen in print things like UDP isn't really used that much, mainly connection oriented TCP. That's what's used. I'm like, yeah, just leave DNS out. <laughs> exactly. UDP is used heavily. You bet. Intensively in every TCP IP network. So, yeah. At time, 214, Adam Hudson. Hi, Adam. Hey, Adam. I started the journey of A-plus certification. I've been wondering what to do after and be able. I'm looking for a follow-up. To land a position. Land a position. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, Scott's pretty much kind of laid down the groundwork. Um, A-plus will move a resume higher up in the stack to get interviews than not having A+. plus. Whether or not it will get you the job or get you the interview is a, a function of a large number of variables. What your other skill sets are, what's the competition got, where are you located, uh, what's the market forces there. So maybe you can, and, and certainly you should, start job hunting as you approach completion. Don't wait to finish because you wanna get on with somebody. You say, look, I've got some, in knowledge and I want to learn more. I want to learn hands-on with you. Um, but if that doesn't land you the job, first of all, formal education goes a long way. So 
getting some traditional schooling is going to help. And then be looking at Network Plus and or Security Plus. Depends, of course, on what are your goals? What do you want to do? So if you want to be a coder, A plus is a, a good foundation, but SEC plus and security plus are probably not for you. After that, you start looking into Java courses or Python courses, the, the most right. popular and important language. So it's what you want to do is identify for yourself what kind of career you're planning on getting into or starting uh, and start Googling that research uh, or you know, let us know. What do, you, what do you think you want to do? And maybe we can help steer you in some direction. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. I'm looking down questions. Tullowit played at half speed for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sound terrible at half speed. I have this, yeah, I, mean, I, I have a fairly high voice. Not exactly alto, but certainly on the, the higher ends of baritone. Uh, I just sound awful. <laughs> Brendan, of course, was terrified going four hours because that meant we were going to go through the entire download of no! <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> That's what I didn't do. Uh, oh, I guess. Oh, it's not a trilogy. What's a nine? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Probably Nutha something. A Nuthagy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's officially a Nuthagy. I like it. <laughs> not an analogy. Hey, Elbow, nice to see you. Thank oh, you. I lost a couple of people. I was going to do the big announcement. I'm going to here anyways, as soon as I finish a couple of these questions. Tullowit, you could not be more prescient. Okay, you said it. I'm going to do it. So at 218, Tullowit says, maybe Dave is getting us the creator of the pie to join us for a Zoom session, Dr. Pie himself. Watcheth thou this, my friends. Click on that, click on this. Click on that and that, and then go to. So here it is, September 25th, last Friday of the month. We have a special guest on Pi Day Friday, Dr. Eben Upton, the founder of the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the inventor of the Raspberry Pi with his uh, doctorate from Cambridge in electronics and uh, his wife Liz who also helps run the foundation or runs a great deal of it uh, we've got him we're still working for how long it's he's going to be able to join us for as you may know he's over in England and they are more than one hour off from our central time zone here in Texas but we're going to finalize uh, all those details in the upcoming days but he wrote me a, a very nice note today that says would love to join you for the event. I told him about all you guys. Uh, he said, even though Tullowit was here, he was looking forward. <laughs> so have your questions ready. Do a little research on him and the foundation to, to build up some questions. And I, I've seen him speak before. He can go all over the board. So, uh, and he is just an interesting guy to listen to. He's fun to listen to, knowledgeable as you wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, we got Dr. Even Upton. He just wants to be called Even on Friday, September 25th. Tell your friends. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this. Oh, I am so stoked. Well, I'm done. Um, I don't have any reason to continue the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, All right, maybe I'll look at some more questions. I'm going to do that a couple more times as the uh, the show goes on for new faces and so forth. So very good mind reading, Tullowit. And uh, say say hello to Alice, Popsy, who's here. Oh, super. Elbow, hi. I'm, I'm doing the, the Kevin at 219. Uh, El Elbow joined in at 217. Right. And uh, complimented you on your haircut. <laughs> Nobody's complimenting me on my haircut because I haven't had one in months at this point. <laughs> right, but we are getting you a bigger comb, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 219, Kevin Lopez, have you ever clustered Raspberry Pi to make a mini supercomputer? Would this be a good personal project to impress employers during an interview? Yes to the first. Yes to the second, if you can back it up. Now, you don't want to say, uh, I followed uh, somebody's tutorial and I built it and here it is and it works. If, if you can't explain what you did and, and how you did it, 
and you know what you've truly accomplished there. So, but yeah, I mean, you've got uh, some background in there. You can explain the messaging system. That's the heart of clustering is messaging. It has nothing to do with the kind of messaging that you and I think about on a day to day. It's uh, the scheduler between the master node and all the sub nodes where they communicate with each other. Here's your piece to work on. Let me know your status, that kind of stuff. That's really what the whole game is about. But yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, we will do a cluster here. I don't envision one for a few months. We had to get a lot more fundamentals down, but we will definitely do a cluster. Sounds cool. <laughs> and then what can we do with it? Elbow, does anybody, <laughs> wants to know if anybody teases you about Sec Plus on non-AMA days. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only thing I get teased about is usually, um, uh, what I get teased about these days is is literally the hair because I show up at the our morning meetings, and I it I'm getting so lazy now, or so used to not being in front of other people that I I forget to actually comb my hair and it it is really long. I mean it, <laughs> and it's usually sticking up in weird ways and people are just like oh this guy. And what's really cool is sometimes he gets up early and goes out for a morning walk, run, whatever type of exercise thing. He turns into this horrible greasy sweat ball but he's going to shower after the morning meeting so he comes in with all that stringy <laughs> it's, it's a, wow, what a great picture yeah sometime we'll do a morning session with everybody here and let them see what we look like <laughs> <laughs> i like it since mike has never worn a button down in one of these shindigs or rarely <laughs> we could join the mike crowd and turn up in t-shirts <laughs> t-shirts and nasa swag <laughs> <laughs> yes i have to define terms tolowit <laughs> and Greg, at 220. Excellent. John Lehman, welcome back. Nice to see you. I mentioned getting an interview over a week ago, mostly in thanks to your Network Plus resources as well. You got it. Fantastic. I got it. I was going to be That's exciting. Onto the Cyber Ready course from CompTIA themselves. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Um, we get 10% of your first year salary if you use our resources. So. <laughs> That's P.O. Box. <laughs> Wonderful news. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's that's great. And going from construction to tech. Mm -hmm. That's a nice jump. Right. You'll be spending six months learning CompTIA Sec Plus and CISA, exams included. Man, that's the, the Mike Panacea yeah. dream. Right. Get a job. Get a job with somebody who will train you. Get a job with somebody who will pay for your certs. You, that's the trifecta. Hey, greetings, Alice. I know, Scott said you were here, but now I see your name. Thank you for the haircut thoughts. <laughs> I, I got brave yesterday. I threw the mask on and went and visited Sunny. I've been seeing Sunny for, good Lord, over 20 years. <clears throat> and I was the only one brave enough to be in there, so I felt really good. That's that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I told the, the wife, I was, I was heading up there, and if there was anybody in there, I was coming right home, but. Elbow, quick question. What components should be put in the motherboard when you build outside before mounting the case? Just CPU and RAM? Yeah, that's all I ever do. Um, and of course, the CPU cooler, especially if it's uh, an extended and oversized cooler or something like that. Um, you know, because what, what else are you going to put in there? Everything else is wires. Um, so, you know, arguably you could put power supply wires, but that's not practical. Uh, same thing, I guess, if you wanted to put, you know, SATA cables on the motherboard, but they're not in the way. It's not a big deal. So CPU and RAM are, are the two standard items. Anything you'd put in, Scott? Yeah, see, I'm, I'm going to disagree um, okay. because I, How do I, I turn I, your video and audio off. Say what? <laughs> How do I turn your... <laughs> Can't do that, Dave. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I build all of my all of my systems outside the case. Um, even before I got, and I, I'm, the thing is connected, otherwise I'd grab my bench tech station, which I actually have a inside out case now that is my, my uh, workstation, my Linux workstation. Um, but even before that, just on a straight up on a Mac, I would build the, take the motherboard, CPU, cooler, RAM, pop in the M.2 drive, because it's so much easier to do that stuff when it's outside the case. I wasn't thinking that too. You're right you know, about that. Connect, I connect the power. I, I 
connect the keyboard and mouse. I, if so many motherboards have built in video that I don't necessarily worry about putting in a, a high end GPU to start. Uh, but if it doesn't have built in video, then of course you have to put the GPU in. Um, and then you connect your power supply and boot it up. I mean, okay, we might be talking about two different things here, Scott. Uh, it sounds like you're talking about uh, building it completely for the sake of testing. The way I understood his question is the way that, that Mike talks about it in the A plus video that says, if I'm going to case it up, what can I do to the MOBO ahead of time before I lift it into the case? Then, oh, okay, certainly then. Uh, so then the only thing I would add is the M.2 drive. Yeah. And I got an ad from uh, Western Digital yesterday about their new armor, whatever that model it's called, uh, encrypting M2, hmm. which they have for internal and external. Yeah, I know that's interesting. I, I don't know if it's exciting for me. I don't have anything that I feel the need to encrypt, but you know, for those. Okay, hope that helps, Elbow. GPU as well. Yeah, I mean, if you put a GPU in, especially you know the kind of modern GPUs that we're talking about, and 3060, 3070, and 3080 are out at 700 bucks. Oh man, huh? I, I, I mean, that's just cumbersome because you can't get that board in there and get that aligned with the slots and everything in advance. A lot easier to put a, a GPU in a slotted GPU after the fact. Yeah, very much so. And uh, I just kind of scanning the end of the end of the questions. Elbow confirmed that your interpretation was the what he was going for. So Ooh. there you go. So at 223, Andy STL says he purchased the 501 Sec Plus exam using Dr. Sanger. Discount. Oh, nice. Yeah, good, good for you. Good. And the exam this month. So, all right, hit it. I tell you what, I'm going to throw that discount code up while you find a good question to answer. Okay. Uh, so lots of people kind of following up with, uh, elbow on, uh, what to put on, put on the motherboard before the kit, before put, installing in the case. Um, and I would, I would definitely go CPU cooler and Ram and, and M.2, uh, before you put it in, cool. uh, always, of course, check your standoffs, standoffs, standouts, standups, standoffs, standoffs. I got that wrong for 10 years. I, yeah, I will fight about that one for decades. <laughs> Make sure there's nothing nothing metal touching the underside of the motherboard and you're golden. So that would be it. Did you find your slide? No, of course not. I'll get it up in a little bit when, when we get okay. to a delay point. I'd rather talk with everybody. So let me get back to yeah, notes awesome. and pop outs and things like that. Put this in this. Okay, posting. Alice is sad that you've lost your Santa Claus look. <laughs> He'll grow it back for Bad December. news. Uh, baldness doesn't run in my family. Not till much older than I am now, anyways. So it won't be long before it's back to Kenny Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Rogers, Santa Claus, you know. You've got, what, three, four months before, before Christmas? Yeah, exactly. I have faith that you will grow it out. I, I'm looking at this elbow thing. He's talking to Greg, but this intrigues me. Um, elbow says to Greg, thanks. The one my friend is using is pretty, okay. I, I, I you know, saw the first glance and, and thought it said, my friend is pretty huge. Boy, am I your friend? <laughs> Are you huge? I'm big in Less Japan. huge than I was when shutdown started, down about 40. And it's not for good exercise. It's just because I don't eat like I do when I work and drive two hours to and from work. Yeah, that's true. Gross, I just. So uh, yeah, lots of people popped up with the Star Wars nonology <laughs> trilogy of trilogies, which is awesome. Thank you, new word for me. It's true. Uh, this is in the, uh, yes. Pass it on to the friend and moving on. Dave, wow. like your new haircut, but you lost, <laughs> there's my Santa, okay. Nonology, is, it, is that, Tell me, is that a legit thing or is that one of your creations? Because I would, I'm curious what a, a nine is in the same way that quad is a four and tri is a three and so forth. Taco Taco, 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 Taco agreed with him too. So, okay, we can, we can look it up. But so, hey, tri oh, I like Riggs, trilogy of trilogies. 
Yep. <laughs> so a, f- a few people down, El- uh, Elbow says you should get uh, Dr. Eben to give you a signed pie, which oh. would be that would be pretty you can't sweet. imagine the the greedy list of things that I have to ask him offline. <laughs> <laughs> I got my list of questions that I'm going to ask in front of you guys, and then there's hey, by the way, that gold plated one, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so very exciting. And Andy, yeah, UK is six hours ahead, uh, so it'll be yeah. pretty late at night. He'll be, right, be eight, yeah. I imagine we'll probably get him for the first hour, but you know who knows? Guys like that, and I know of him, uh, are workaholics. They they get that four hours of sleep a night, and that's too much because they got things to do. So we'll see. But breaking away from all those millions of things he does to join us, that's uh, probably quite the sacrifice, and uh, I think we're really honored here. Yeah, and no, I'm 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 totally. And here, here I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal my California roots. I'm totally stoked about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't believe it. I, I was doing something in my phone ding that said I got an email and it said even up then. I was like, I can't look at this. <laughs> I've got to sit down at my desk and read it in case I fall. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it was a heartbreaker because the first sentence, I would love to join you for your pie, but and I was crushed. And then it was, we have to do it on this date instead of that date because of commitments. Sweet. Have I seen the drunk Jeff Goldblum Apple ads? I have not, and I am a real Jeff Goldblum fan. And so, so we'll put it on the we'll put it on the list and YouTube it after after the show. Oh no! You, are you crazy? We download it. We put it into the movie's library of Plex, and then we show it. Okay. <laughs> Why not? No, we can get on my little notepad here and save that because I'm terrible about remembering things I said I'm going to do after the show. But now I've remembered it. Oh, I, YouTube scrolling. Ah, I'm at 2:29. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Yeah, way to go, Alice. Hashtag me too. Yeah, right. I know. I'm excited. So at 2:31, Andy asks, would an external hard drive need to be formatted with Raspberry OS to use as storage for a Pi 4 media server. External drive. No, uh, he says. So that was a really hesitant no. Well, it, 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 the, all the usual variables here. If you're not booting off of it, it doesn't need to be an EXT4 file system. The boot drive has to be a FAT32 or FAT64. It doesn't have to be very big. There's a handful of boot files on there. And then it moves over into the EXT4 world for the usual Linux standard file structures. Now, okay. for building anything else that you want to access or to have others access, you can do that on the EXT4 system or on a FAT external drive or even an NTFS, Nate, that takes a little magic and I wouldn't do it with that. But no, it does not have to be uh, a Linux file system. And in fact, if you're going to do, eh, no, there is no in fact there. It simply doesn't have to be used the one that you're happiest with. Right. <clears throat> I would personally do EXT4 to manage consistent security across the pair, even if I were doing something like a Samba share. But do what you're comfortable. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Everybody's so, into your hair too. I'm like, <laughs> back, back to back in morning meetings this week, uh, my two bosses, Dudley Lemur, who's the CEO of the company, and then Mike Myers, president of the company. Mike wasn't even in town. And the first thing Dudley says to me in the morning is like, we're going we're gonna to come up with a fund for get Scott a comb. Get Scott a comb fund. And we're all like, ha, 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 yeah, okay, that's funny, funny, whatever. The next day, Mike shows up for our morning meeting, and he goes, wow, okay, we need to start a, a GoFundMe or something for Scott to get a comb. And we're like, what? <laughs> Come on, man. I use brushes. <laughs> so at 2.32, David Zintara, and I'm uh, – Zintara? Zintara? Yeah, I'm, yeah we've, we've done him before. Hi, David. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, completely threw me for a loop because, yeah, absolutely. A Beowulf cluster, 100 white box PCs. Now you can do the same thing with a, a Raspberry Pi. I'm in the middle of rereading 
like one of the best space opera uh, science fiction series ever based on a character named Honor Harrington. And it's, uh, uh, what's the, what's the Horatio Hornblower, right? The, yeah. the wet Navy, all the adventure books and stuff. So uh, David Weber, the author has created this series kind of loosely based on that, but okay. in space and deep space. And one of the clusters uh, and uh, one of the places is the Beowulf cluster. And I was like, wow, oh. you're reading the Harrington books too? Right, what like, a reference. Click, click, oh, right, never mind. <laughs> right, and Beowulf clusters are still the approach, though it's not the exclusive approach that it was 20 years ago. 234, Brendan. Is there a way to share a folder over home network without home groups? Been trying to share a folder on my PC to other PCs in my home. It's been a pain. Uh, it should be insanely easy. We don't need home groups. All we need to do is create a folder. And if you're talking about sharing it in your home, uh, use simple shares. Uh, Mike did a presentation on that in AMA. I've got it documented. I won't be able to, to find it here. But you're a regular. Uh, I will have that answer for Mike ready to post or I'll stick it in the chat on Monday, uh, which episode he did that in. But in the meantime, uh, if you're just looking for a quicker answer over the weekend, uh, just look up simple share Windows, I assume Windows 10. And uh, that's what you want to do. Simple, a simple share, not an NTFS share. Right. But and you, uh, you might also be running into permissions things. So you need to, you, you would have to have uh, accounts set up if you're just in a work group? Well, that's what I'm thinking. If you do a simple and you apply the, the simple uh, access rules to the everyone group, right? you don't even need an account because it's everyone. Right. We'll, we'll get that info, info for you, Brandon. Brandon. Sorry. I said <laughs> it right the first time. You did. You did. <laughs> I can't. So in case, in case it wasn't really obvious to all of you, I can't help myself, right? I've been an editor for so long that I just correct things. I'm one of those annoying people. Okay, it's why I, I accepted the job because I need correcting and my <laughs> wife's not up to it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John Lehman suggests uh, doing a NAS as well. Eh. Of course, that's an additional expense and more hard drives. I, I, the cost-effective solution is to do a a share on your existing hard drive. Right. Exit. I've been into using the word exit lately, but so it's, certainly a NASA is fine. Yeah. 238. Kevin Lopez, if you want to practice hacking on Raspberry Pi, do you need Kali Linux or can you use Raspberry Pi OS? Yes and yes. So there is a dedicated version of Kali that's all ready for RasPi. Uh, and you can install all of the Kali utilities uh, on Raspberry Pi OS. Easiest thing, of course, is Kali. I was thinking about that today. I'm, I'm chewing on ideas for things we're going to do in the future. And that one totally crossed my mind, how to install Kali. And I didn't write it down on my idea page. So if you will uh, do your thing there while I go update that page before I forget it. Yep. And uh, John Lehman and Alice Potsy had both both agreed um, that for practicing hacking, uh, you just can't beat Kali Linux. I mean, it's it's a really astonishingly great package um, and all the tools built in, ready to go. Uh, just remember to wear your white hat, not your black hat. Mm -hmm. and so you don't get in trouble while you're learning how to hack, but um, always ask permission or even better, hack your own stuff first. Right, set up a network just for you to play in if you can. Uh, you can do this with virtual machines as well as regular hardware or throw a bunch of pies together and then you can just create little networks to attack. So all of these things are good and yeah, practice makes perfect on this one and Kali is a great way to go. Cool, all right, I've got my notes for future ideas updated. Getting near the end, I'm glad, so we can get started on some other stuff. Yep. Tolowit is reminding me at 241 of the other. I really did, man. I, I grew up in Pacific Beach, 
in Southern California, which is a, a part of San Diego. Holwood Maybe. laughs at you as he looks out on the beach in Hawaii. I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, until I was 15 and I was right there, surfer boy, the whole thing. And yeah, that language, every once in a while, it slips out because it's so deep in my, in my core. But what's, there you go. what's weird, Tolowit, is in the office, he still uses the word tubular. <laughs> <laughs> totally tubular, dude. <laughs> 244, Tolowit says, Yo, you're welcome, Andy. Uh, I wonder if anyone has brought a pie to the ISS, two of them. It's probably more powerful than the computers on the original spacecrafts. Of course it is. Your, uh, the, the calculator that you used in sixth grade was more powerful than the computers that they used. And you know, define power and then you can bring Michael Smyre into this discussion and there goes four hours. Uh, but yes, there are a pair of pies that are on the ISS. Definitely ask uh, even about those, uh, but it was a, a years going project where it was kind of a, a two phase thing. One, they had a, a contest available to school students to propose and write programs that would be interesting to run on a Pi on the ISS. And then on the other side was the hardware aspect where they had to get this thing, these things tested and blessed so that they would be allowed to operate on the ISS and plug into ISS power systems and a huge, huge and expensive process to go through all that. But yeah, they're up there. And cool. the contest continues every year. There's, there's dozens and dozens of experiments that they run every year. And it's really cool because they don't ship the code up on any of the, the supply shuttles that's done over the, uh, the occasional intranet links that they use by radio frequency. So they get uploaded over their little RF IP link. It's very cool. Huh. Nice. And it gets scanned before it goes up and it gets scanned after it goes up. And I think they scan it after it's done running. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, they can't afford to make any mistakes. <laughs> yeah, still Not waiting to hear about the leak that appeared last weekend. Uh, okay, Kevin's checking in and thanking everybody. Just ordered an eight gig RAM. Uh, Elbow, was that you who emailed me this week? Uh, I tried to talk out of an eight gig and you, you tough bananas, I get the best one I can. So I'm with you. you. You beat me to an eight gig and so does Kevin. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's gonna be, you can make a virtual machine. There's a couple different virtual machine projects that could be done. QEMU is one of them. And uh, I was going through my notes this week and I forgot, there's a, there are two others that are very popular, so we'll get on that. Yes, absolutely, Alice, we will do an AMA about Pi clustering. I'm going to hold that. It's gonna be a couple of, at least two months, maybe a little more, because we gotta get some hardware under our belt. Uh, not much, uh, but it's some more foundational stuff. And last one from Tolowood, and then I'm gonna switch back to my outline. I wanna see if I can hook up a Pi to my car's diagnostic port. You will need an OBS2 uh, scanner, and then it has to go into the USB port of your Pi. And they make those, and there is code out there to run them. But I haven't played in that arena. I've never actually plugged in a regular OBS2 scanner into any of my cars. Why not? Here, just because there's professionals, and they know <laughs> how to do this. <laughs> I can put air in my tires. Yeah. Well, that's two steps above me. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's take a look at some notes and talk about some cool things okay sounds good and uh while dave is looking or looking at his notes and um running running through his presentation if you guys have other questions for us they don't have to be about the raspberry pi or linux they can be about anything both dave and i have been in the field for a very long time and have played with all kinds of computers and hardware and networks and security stuff and um, we, between us, between us, we can come close to having Mike's knowledge, but you know, we're, uh, we're not, we're not slouches. So ask us some questions. Slick. Right, I want to share a story okay. quasi related to everything we do here. Uh, some of you heard a little bit about this when, uh, Scott and I subbed on, on Monday earlier this week, and then Mike started up again on Wednesday. Uh, but not all of our pie heads were there. So, 
uh, last Saturday, Micro Center, we have one in, in Houston, there's one in most of the major cities in the US, and this was unusual. They did this one uh, in that you could order online. Usually uh, when Micro Center has a sale on Raspberry Pis, it's in store only, but they had a good sale last Saturday. Um, so I went down and I bought two more Pi 4s with two gigs and a four gig model. And the price was really, really good. And I'm not gonna sell you on that. Now, remember last Friday, we did a Plex server installation on a 3B and it was okay. The, the installation went fine and the view of the thing went fine. And I thought, well, what happens if we put this on a four? Well, why do we want to put it on the four? What do you get from the four, four B that you don't get on the three B? It's a pretty good list. I always like to think it's a little bit better, but it's got a faster CPU, a little bit, couple hundred megahertz. It's got twice the RAM of a three B. It's got dual HDMI outputs. It's got gigabit ethernet that helps a any kind of installation where you have to pull down large amounts of data. And I want to sidetrack on this one. Uh, we went through an install where we had to download a backup image of Chrome, of Chrome, one more time, Chrome OS for a tablet so that we could extract some stuff out of there and make our Chromium browser work. And that took 15 minutes on the 3B. It took two and a half minutes on the, the 4B. And the difference I think was primarily because of the high speed gigabit link. So we got gigabits, uh, 3B and everything previous to that only had 100 megabits. Uh, there's a full 64 bit operating system, Raspberry Pi OS. When you load it on any Pi, looks at the CPU and says, should I load 32 bit? Should I load 64 bit? So I got all that and all I did was take one of the micro SD cards that I'd used to do my experimenting and development for Plex install, and I popped it into this Pi 4. And it booted up way faster than the 3B, booted yeah. up the 64-bit OS, and then I loaded Chromium, and it came up 47 times faster than Chromium on 3B. And then I fired up Plex, and that loaded up and everything was just better. And then when I started playing the movies, what I thought was fine on the 3B uh, turned out was relatively speaking terrible and doing it on the four was like watching television. And what, one of the experiments that I did was I used an HDMI connector to an HDMI monitor and simultaneously fed it through the VNC remote connection to watch the two things happen simultaneously. And it was so jumpy, not horribly, unwatchably so, but it was very jumpy on the remote connection and so smooth and so wonderful. So when we do RNC today, uh, again, it might be a little less than smooth looking. Don't be discouraged when you hook it up live to an HDMI monitor, it's just nothing but good. So, uh... Let's give them. Let's give them the 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 specs a little bit, um, or more pre more precisely, because you can still buy a three B or a four B, right? Right now. Mm -hmm. So the difference is is what? Well, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, other than price. Let's do one by one. Uh, one point five gigahertz on three B, I think, for the CPU, and closer to one point eight on the four. One gig of RAM on the three B two gigs or four gigs or eight gigs on the four. And you can get a one gig model too, but since they're the same price, one gig and two gig, why wouldn't you get the two? And my guess is when they run out of ones in stock, we won't see any more of them. 32-bit uh, CPU in Pi 3B and previous, 64-bit in the later versions and a supporting operating system. Uh, the, the gigabit ethernet, of course, versus the 100 megabit. And while we haven't experimented with this yet or talked about it, in addition to the, the same 40 pin general purpose IO header, uh, there's a four pin power over ethernet connector. You need a little adapter for that, but you can run Pi on PoE now. Now they were folks who were kind of doing that aftermarket 
but now there's an official one from Raz Pi. And 3B, you can still get, and there's still great uses for it. We got a, uh, next week, next Friday, we're doing Pi Hole, and I'm going to do that on a 3B because I don't need uh, the high video quality and frame rates and things like that. And it's a very low load type of application, even for as powerful as it is and for the cool things that it does. Uh, people run it all the time on a Pi Zero. So it's still a great place for those, and they're only 25 bucks, but it's only 35 bucks for the two gig 4Bs, and the sale on these ones was uh, 30 bucks. Uh, they had this cool deal. Like I wasn't going to do this, but since I'm down the road now, uh, they'll only sell you one at 30 bucks when you go in because they don't want resellers coming in and buying them in quantity. So if you buy one, it's 30 bucks. If you buy two, it's 40 bucks. If you buy more than two, it's 60 bucks. And so they just want, don't want people scooping them up uh, right. or resellers to buy them. So my missus was kind enough to go down with me. Uh, so she bought one of the two gigs. I bought one of the two gigs. There was no limit on the four gigs. I guess that 45 bucks scared everybody away. <laughs> So, so yeah, stuff. I mean, the difference, the difference is $10. Right. I mean, totally worth it. Yeah. If you're setting up a, a media server on a, and want to use a Raspberry Pi, you know, spring for the extra 10 bucks and right. totally worth it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that was Hope my update on that. All right. So I've got an unscripted little quickie presentation. Okay. Where are we at? It's uh, on the hour. I don't think we're going to get to the bash script today, but we'll see. So let me fire up a, uh, a connection to a Pi with Wireshark. OK. <clears throat> and while, uh, while you were mentioning specs, uh, John, John Lehman pointed out that uh, the, the 4 has USB 3. That's true. Forgot about that. A pair of is, USB 3s and a pair of USB 2s. Yeah, which is sub substantially faster than the 2s. So. Oh, and of course, the dual HDMI. So yeah, man, it's just nothing but magic. For forty-five dollars, <laughs> it's just stunning. It's illegal in in thirty-three states. Right. I want to. I want them in my Cracker Jacks boxes. <laughs> okay, so this is a three B. We're in the current version of the OS. It's thirty-two bit, but it works Pi. I'm sorry, uh, Wireshark, very very well. Buzzing along, coming to life. Give me that no interfaces found there they are. So we'll do a capture, just start capturing generically on anything we want here. I was watching Bob Ross last night before bedtime. You can see he kind of went through phases of the television show. And last night he was just hilarious, whatever his old rerun was. Wife and I were cracking up at, at his presentation. Okay, so this is up and running. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just open up any old Joe Schmo browser here. And I'm going to hit a website that this computer has never hit before. Not one that I can even think of I've ever been to before. So I'm just gonna invent some place. <clears throat> oh, let me see, www dot chillout.com. Let's see if such a place exists. Oh, please don't 404 me. I really want to hit one that works without having to dig. Yeah, go to cheese.com. You know, I think it's gone. Okay, there was something there. So that's all I need. So we'll go back to Wireshark. And we'll stop capture. So remember, everybody, your computer, whatever computer you're running, Pi, Windows, Mac, fill in the blank, it doesn't understand how to contact a server called chillout.com or any other server. TCP IP is a game of numbers. And he says, I can't contact that thing unless I know its IP address. So here came the request from my browser down to the network layer. And the network layer said, what's chillout.com? That means nothing to me. Let me stop. And I'm going to make a DNS call now. I'm going to call 
whatever is programmed into here to be my first preferred DNS server. I'm going to say, hey, do you know about a place called chillout.com? And if he does, he'll report back the IP address. And if he doesn't, he'll get me in contact with another DNS server that does and on and on until uh, somebody finally resolves that number, sends it back to my computer, and then we can continue to build a packet. Yeah, a packet at the network layer. So let's go see if we can find that. I haven't done this experiment. I've done it on many machines. I did not do it on this machine. So here's hoping that it works. So all we're gonna do is try and find it by port. Now let's check tcp.port equals, need a space there and a space. 50. Are you gonna show us? Three. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was, I, I forgot that I haven't shared. That's the other reason Scott's here, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, Dave. <laughs> okay, so we're looking again at Wireshark, and I've just typed in this filter, tcp.ip or t port space equals equals space 53, and we'll see if there's any TCP port 53 calls in here. Just hit the enter key on that. And he says, nope, there are no TCP ports for 53. So as at least two of you said, UDP, I'm sorry, DNS is a port 53 process. And there we go. Now, a lot of this may have happened before I got there. So let's take a look and see if we can find cool place. www gstatic.com that might have been a redirector but you can see it came from an ethereal port that my computer created as a udp 47 293 and sent it to some ip address its preferred server on port 53 oh here we go so came from my machine 192 168 1 .133, port 47 293 and then send it to my default gateway, which is also a DNS, either server or redirector. So, hey, 192.168.1.1, port 53, I have a query for you. And I'm going to query about this GST. So that may not have been uh, the one in question. Let's head down a little further. There's all kinds of stuff constantly going on. And there we go, there's chill out. <clears throat> And we could have added that as an and search in here. So same process from my computer, from the uh, the Pi rather, and a different ethereal port to the DNS redirector to the DNS port 53. Hey, what do you know about chillout.com? And he says, well, there's a quad A record for it. Anybody remember what a, a triple A and a quad A record are? A triple A record is an IPv4 standard entry in a DNS server, and a quad A is an IPv6. So that's all I wanted to show you, just to remind us a couple of things, that DNS is a UDP process. It uses port 53, and you can have a ton of fun firing up your Wireshark. I know you've all set up a Wireshark now, on your Windows machine, your Pi machines, your Linux machines, your virtual machines, whatever you've got. And there's some pretty cool stuff. Just for Hoots here, I'm gonna load up that DNS PCAP that I downloaded here recently. Open. And we will go cruising for it, Pi. I put it in the FTP files folder. There's a DNS PCAP. Double click it. It's going to whine at me. Do you want me to save those ones that you did earlier? Nope. And so here's pretty much the same thing. Here's some host with an Ethereal port calling to some local DNS server in their WAN on port 53 asking how to find google.com. So easy enough to do. You can do this. The trick is learning the filters. So that's all I got, just a, a quick, short little 
protocol of the week. By the way, if you see this little lightning bolt in the upper right-hand corner, it disappeared right now. Uh, that tells me that I'm using uh, a power supply with a little less current than the Pi would prefer. Uh, I want to show you one other thing while I'm here real quick. Get your stopwatches going. I'm going to fire up the Chromium DRM web browser on this 3B, and then we're going to compare that when we do it on the 4B. This is a freshly booted Pi. I just booted it up just prior to uh, we start in the class. Okay, it took about seven seconds for Chromium to boot up. Now how long for the Plex server to boot up? Gonna run out of fingers. 11, 12, 13, 14. Counting out loud, 3, 24, 25. There we go. About 26, call them seconds, whatever I my timing works out to be. Man, I am horrified. An 18-wheeler just pulled into my cul-de-sac. Terrified they're going to deliver something. <laughs> oh, maybe it's a, a load of pies. For the win. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. By the way, heads up for everybody. Don't waste your time asking when the next version of the Pi is coming out or what it's going to include. Raspberry Pi never, ever, 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 ever telegraphs what's coming up. They surprise everybody on the day. All right, let me check my handy dandy notes here. We did that, we did that. So we're gonna look at the Plex server for a couple of minutes here. And I gotta tell you, I had an epiphany. Let me get this thing going on in the background real quick. So I can switch to you when we're ready to go, PlexPi. So while you're switching, Bobo has some good advice. If people in masks start pouring out of the 18-wheeler, panic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fair enough. I got nothing, I got nothing to add to that. <laughs> okay, so I had an epiphany. And when we started this project, how to play Cody and how to play Plex and how to get them together, I had never done that. I was very upfront about that. I had no experience with Plex. And the integration of the two of them is something that I have uh, read and see lots of commentary about people doing. But I, I had a, a vision in my mind of what that meant. And I was totally wrong. So maybe you have a vision in your mind. And maybe I even incorrectly kind of communicated my vision to you. So when I started really integrating it and playing with it, uh, I, I think I probably was a little bit disappointed until I began to understand the whole point. So here's what I envisioned. I envisioned, first of all, that if you have a Plex server and you want to install movies into a library, you go to that library and you use some kind of a menu uh, and it uploads or goes where you say to get the movie from and downloads it or does whatever. Not the case. Uh, built within Plex is no tool to download a movie and save it into your library. What you have to do is manually copy it as a file into the library. So there's all kinds of different ways to do that. Um, what I've been doing this week is downloading legal things uh, to my PC and then using SCP to copy them over to the Pi and for some creative reasons, it was easier for me then to go to the Pi and move them from where I was SCPing them to into the movies folder. So there's no really cool way to use Plex to perform that download. Now, that having been said, I've only played with Plex for a week. Maybe there's something there that I didn't find. Dave, but I'm Dave. Using it hard, pretty hard. Can, yes, Scott. Can you back up just uh, a hair and explain to us why you would want to use what seem to be competing media centers. Right. So we've, as, talked, as combined. so we've talked a little bit about this in the past. They do appear to be competitive. And the reason is Cody does some things way better than Plex. Plex does some things, one thing, in my opinion at this point, way better than Cody does. 
So they both have the ability to reach out and find content. There are, in the case of Cody, zillions and zillions and zillions of downloadable and selectable repositories. There's a small handful in Plex, and they mostly yes. seem to be formed around Crackle. Crackle is a, a Sony-owned content delivery system. They show their old movies and their old shows on it and things like that. You can save content in Kodi, but what you wind up saving is a file name. And you put it in a repository and then you go search through it by the file name, or maybe it even puts up a, a poster on the file. Mm -hmm. But what Plex adds to the game is an incredible organizational structure built into its repository. So there are all kinds, I'm gonna demo this in a second. There's all kinds of tabs and metadata that you can add to these. And therefore, uh, maybe I wanna see all the movies that were ever directed by Robert Altman. Uh, that's not something that I can do well in the Cody system, but I can in Plex. So that's what we're gonna take advantage when we uh, join them together. Cody is going to be able to use the file repository system to uh, access saved files that you store in Plex. Okay. Well, let's right. take a look at that. All right. Uh, it was 26 seconds to download the Chromium DRM browser from a fresh boot. Oops. Dang it. I started it without you. Three, four, five. Okay. The Chromium browser came up in five seconds. Now let me screen share that with you. The Chromium browser came up in 27 or in seven seconds on the other one. So a little improvement, not stunningly different. And now we flex server. Seven that seconds. A stunning difference. Man. Wow. Absolutely stunning. Okay. So I set up that Plex server last Friday. The only thing that I've done to it this week, as I've experimented, is to add movies into the repository. So there's no major magic that's going on in here. Uh, I did tell the Chromium browser to remember my name and password. So it's not prompting me for a password. That was something that wasn't working on the other one. Now we've set up last Friday, a pair of Plex servers, one on one Pi and one on the other. And we'll be able to access them both. It doesn't really matter what you pick here. So I'm sitting on uh, Plex Pi, the 4B. I'll continue. It says, do you want to see all the usual categories uh, or would you not like to see some of those today? Nah, I want to see them all. So it always goes through that and calls it finishing setup. And then here's the trick to see your personal libraries. We click on that more and then we pick it. As I said, doesn't really matter here what you pick. So here's the repositories. I set up a movies repository. Oops, I want this one. <clears throat> Set up a movies repository on both of them. And if I look at that movies repository and I look in the library over here, this stuff takes a while to get used to. So you got to play with this. Let me see if I can widen this out. Yeah, it just kind of expands it a little bit. It doesn't really give you more content. But you can see the stuff that I've added this week. I put uh, Scott's favorite movie in here, the Doc Savage movie from 1975. <laughs> so all I've done to do this is just copied a movie file, an MP4 or a DivX or whatever that it recognizes into the movies repository folder in slash opt slash Plex media slash movies. And as soon as you boot up Plex, he reads for any changes in that folder and updates them. I didn't have to put this poster in there. It put it in and it filled in some of the tabs. And there are other places like this home movie that somebody shot of a, a high school band where almost nothing gets filled in. So here's how you manage the tabs. And again, a lot of them got filled in in this one automatically. Plex recognized the movie. It went out and it got a bunch of metadata for us. So I clicked that little edit guy and it had filled in the title for us and a sorting title. You could change the sorting title and change the way this thing sorted it out in title order. If it's your favorite movie, maybe you put a number one in front of this or a zero one. 
And all of this stuff, again, got auto-detected. These tags, the studio, the summary. I didn't put any of that in. Here's more tabs that you can do. Director, what country it was shot in, genres, writers. So all of these are searchable through other menus in Plex. Show me all the comedy movies uh, that included the writer Lester Dent. Very, very popular writer. He was huge. Uh, and that was why they got him for... Uh, Doc Savage. I can't continue this with a straight face. <laughs> he found a couple of, Plex found a couple of different background posters. Let's change one. I'm going to move this up a little so bit. Just for the record, sure. Dave is totally joking about Doc Savage being <laughs> one, my favorite movie, and two, any good whatsoever. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, you get the idea here. So I'm just going to save changes on that. And we should see the repository. There we go. So it's changed the, the poster on it. All right, so I got a repository repository on a Plex server. And by the way, of course, if you click this, it'll start to play. I'm not going to force anybody to suffer through that. Uh, I had something short in here. Uh, big buck money is 10 minutes. All right, I'm not going to go through that. You can explore this stuff at your will. Uh, I, you got to see what I wanted you to see, the fact that content is editable for all kinds of sortable information. And in order to see your personally created repositories from the main menu, click the more option, select your which pie you want to play on, and then, of course, we can create more than one repository here. We just made the one. Uh, all right. I don't need, it doesn't matter if you keep this thing running or not, because the Plex master server knows what's going on. But I'm going to leave that running because it doesn't hurt. So now let's go to Cody. I have to run it on this Raspberry Pi that amazingly says Asus. <laughs> that came up quickly. So let me bring you in on it. So there's the Cody server, just like it would look on a Pi or any other box. And we're going to go up here to the settings and to add-ons. And the Plex add-on is in a Cody held repository. So I don't have to go hunting hunting from the, the web. We'll look in the Cody add-on repository and we'll look in the video add-ons. And these are listed alphabetically. Again, this thing is much more keyboard friendly then mouse friendly. So I'm just paging down here. Plex. So nothing much to do here. It identifies dependencies. When you click install with the, for Plex, all the dependencies, that means add on and support files are included in the repository. So I'm going to say install. And here's everything that's going to get installed. I don't care about any of this. You don't have to have any of them highlighted. We just hit the OK button. And it goes buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. And it 100% downloaded. And now it installed and has Plex 0.2.1. And there was a message up on top that says successfully installed. So now I'm going to use my keyboard and the backspace arrow and go back to the main menu. It's installed. It now has to be configured. This is so frighteningly easy. In the main menu, we go to videos. It was a video add-on. We could also do it in the add-ons menu, but this seems to make more sense. I'll click on video add-ons. Now here's all the add-ons that I've added over the week to experiment with. They're listed alphabetically. There's my friend Plex. I know you people are reading this like, Dave watched South Park? No, I just installed stuff in. So this says, we got to call the home Plex server at Plex.tv. And I already have an account. We use that when we set up the Plex servers for ourselves. And we got to remember this. 
2YX2. I have to open up another browser now. So I'm going to shrink this, 2YX2. OK, that didn't make me happy. Stand by. Oh, OK. I see what I can do here. Bring that back up. Let me stop sharing with you here for a second. OK, the Kodi server is up and running. So now I just got to open up a little browser on the same machine that the Kodi machine is on. OK. okay let me shrink this. I use the browser that I use to watch you guys on YouTube. Open up a tab. I'll show you this. All right, now we go back in the screen share again. Okay, here's a new tab in Brave. Trying to convince us to play Townstar. Oh, I got big lightning up here and thunder. You can probably hear that. So if I go offline, Scott's show, who will do a brilliant job at it. All right, plex.tv. Oops. Sorry, the notification says go to plex.tv whack link. So let me get that right here. Plex.tv slash link. And there's where we put that four digit link number in there, 2YX2. It's not case sensitive, no matter how you type it in, it goes in uppercase. And we link them. Well, that was quick. And you should have seen what happened to the Cody server while it happened, but I'll take you over there now. So it was sitting on that page that said, contact the link website. That was about 100 yards away. I'll bet I had a really bright right, <laughs> right side of my face. Just dangle some keys from kites, man. Yep. Sure. OK, this is the Cody server. So now when you click on, uh, click on XTV, uh, I'm sorry, on Plex TV in your video add-ons, you can go home, and that'll take you to the home folders of Plex or any of the repositories that you have set up. There's the home folder. Go into my movies folder here. I'm already there. You get the idea. So everything that you put in your home folder, in your movies folder, and your other repositories folders is available on your Kodi server using the Plex repository. And super cool. I got my Plex server running at home. I'm at the office at lunch hour, and I want to watch something that I saved in the repository on my home machine. Since the add-on connects to the Plex server central, and it in turn connects real time through my home machine, I don't have to do port forward or anything like that. He'll suck the, uh, the contents of my repositories out of my home machine and route them to wherever I'm playing Cody. So that's the other really awesome benefit of it. You got a nice repository of movies uh, someplace at home or wherever, any place else you want to run. Now you can do this any place else you can run Plex from just as well. But again, since Kodi is usually the better media server because all of its other great content, you saw that stuff I had. Let me get out of this thing and, and we'll take a look at that. Oh, I have this desperate urge to do something on here. Let's start something. Yeah, I got the real Tron. So I have the option of setting up audio or subtitles since we can't carry audio over here. No point. And again, I expect this to be jumpy because A, it's coming from a 3B and B, it's coming across uh, the, the RNC. Yeah, anytime, that's the image. Oh, that's it, this is stock footage. So there's nothing moving on here. 
that makes it a lot less exciting. Yeah, it does. All right, let's start a couple of seconds of big buck money. Yeah, there was a question in the feed. Uh, could you do a quick synopsis of Big Buck Bunny and why you have it? <laughs> Tell you the truth, I have never watched it. All right, so how's that coming? Is that steady, jumpy? On my machine, it looks insanely clear, but... It's a little, it's a little choppy. Okay. All right, I'm not going to watch all of Big Buck Bunny. <laughs> Because it's nine minutes and 30 seconds. I, I'm just scared that you know what this is. I have no idea. <laughs> so, okay, it's something good that I stopped early. All right, so I just used my back arrow key, my backspace key a few times. And now I'm out of Plex. And here is just the beginnings of a few of the repositories that I loaded up on, on my main system that I run in the living room for uh, HTPC, uh, I have hundreds of repositories ready to go. So that's all there is to the integration process. You've built a Plex server, you've built a Kodi server, you just go to the Kodi server, settings, add-ons, and pick the Plex add-on. When you run it for the first time, it'll tell you to open up a browser and go to Plex.tv WAC link. You give it the shared code and they're integrated. And it's really cool and it's really magical. And now that I know about this, I'm going to use it. I will, and there's always pies running in here. I'll run it on my good Plex machine, <clears throat> excuse me. And while we don't normally save content online to watch for later, we tend to like whatever's on right now or whatever somebody's got up and running. We're back. So that's it, man. It's cool, it's easy, it's fun. That and seems totally speaking. simple. Very, very, very simple. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, 1532. I'm not going to do the bash intro today. It's not too long and painful, but it'd be more fun to do next week. Sure. So let's check out some questions. Hey, for a reminder, I think about most of the same people here, but there are a few new faces. Okay. So if you didn't hear, let me share with you our big news. We contacted the founder of Raspberry Pi Foundation current, currently runs it with his wife and a, a staff of not many. They're, they're a very small, lean organization, but he's agreed to join us on Friday, September 25th. So that's three weeks from today. Uh, we're still working out how long he's gonna be with us, what time he'll start, but Dr. Eben Upton is here to talk about Raspberry Pis, the foundation, and to take your questions. So tell your friends, Tell your enemies, I don't care. I, I want people here. He wants to see people here and who knows what kind of good things he's gonna tell us. Man, Very I'm so exciting. excited. Very exciting. I'll be talking about that all weekend with the wife. I got him. I know you told me, <laughs> but I got him. <laughs> all right, how far back do we gotta go, Scott? 257. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. a half an hour, we can catch that up. Absolutely, so tell what asks me, but you're a Brave user as well, as in like a user of Brave. <laughs> uh, I switched to the Brave browser. Have you found it to be sluggish at times? Are there extensions you and Dave would recommend for it? Um, it's blocking a bunch of stuff. So I, I can see at when I hit certain websites where just the, the, the stopping of the stuff that's trying to run automatically We'll, we'll make it, the, the website hesitate. Um, but the website would still hesitate because in another browser, because it would be loading all that other crap. So, uh, and the crap is a technical term. <laughs> um, I don't use many extensions um, that aren't just built in. Dave, do you have? Uh, I have one extension. It's a, an ad blocker for ones that Brave doesn't auto block. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's not a really a big deal because of Pi. In in performance shootouts with all the big browsers, uh, Brave in most circumstances loads pages on the order of 10 to 15 percent faster. There are some pages that are exceptions to that, and they're faster. But by and large, because 
even though there's a, a hiccup and a pause because it stops for an ad that it's not going to load, by virtue of the fact that it doesn't load that ad and some of them can be voluminous, uh, it still loads much faster. Right. In my experience. So Don't here's the taste yeah. of coriander. I'm sorry, go ahead. At 258. Yeah, I skipped a question because elbow looked good, but go ahead. Uh, oh, he already answered it? Nope, nope. Fire away. It, it, okay. It, it, so Kevin, what's the max gigabytes, I assume he meant, mm -hmm. um, micro SSD that you can use on the Pi? A lot of kits have 32 gigabyte drives. Uh, it's the limit of EXT4, which is bigger than any hard drive they have ever made or expect to make in the next 20 some odd years. So however big a drive you can get your mutts on, mitts on, mangles on, uh, it'll work. Really? Yes. I thought there was like a, I thought there was like a 128 gigabyte limit or no, the 128 gigabyte limit is the micro SD card. I was looking at his SSD. Oh, micro uh -huh. SSD. Okay, so we're mixing terms here. So yeah, the I micro just... SD card tops out at 128 gigs at the moment. And that's probably firmware updatable, but the world waits. Okay. But okay. Yeah, if you want to attach an external SSD or hard drive, you will never hit the limit. Okay, so two different things, but yeah, all right, excellent. Yeah, they got completed. Elbow, I don't love the taste of coriander. They they went off on this. I'm not yeah. I'm not sure who started with the uh, <laughs> uh, the food, but there are tons of. I'm gonna slide past most of it then. Well, it's it's uh, yeah, of course. Uh, but at 302, my Cracker Jacks comment came back to haunt me with Elbow saying, "Hacker Jacks is where you get the pies, Scott." <laughs> what? Although it didn't send that one. I know, right? Man, you guys are hanging together too much. Like <laughs> coriander seeds are just cilantro seeds. All right. Hey, Simon Edling is here. Greetings, Simon. Thank you for coming in. All right. I'm just going to ignore everything where somebody responded to somebody else because we got a lot of catching up to do. And I'll assume that you're. Uh, there's yeah, a more on, uh, on commented on your. Uh choice of, I've never gone to this site before. I'm just going to go here. It's like, <gasps> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I would have unshared so fast. I had my, my mouse hovering over unshare. <laughs> Sometimes what has been seen cannot be unseen, Dave. <laughs> and, you know, I probably should have watched Big Buck Bunny before I ever got started. I've heard about it for a long time as a title, but I don't actually know what's in it. So it's animated. It couldn't be dirty, could it? Because <laughs> no one's ever made that's right dirty animated movies before. John Lehman at 304. I did hear Eben do a chat about Pi, and he mentioned that they do a lot of work concentrated on the dollars and cents. Sure, they want to keep it cheap because of uh, a lot of their rationale. I'm not going to explain it any better than he will. Their buying power, right? They 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 make their own. They contract make their own. And remember, we got multiple models in production in England and in Asia, and I'm not sure where else. Uh, but yeah, they, they work very hard to keep the price down. <sighs> so Chaco Taco, has your uh, pie arrived yet? Yeah, there it is at 306. 306, so he's sitting there looking, staring out the window, pining <laughs> for his pie. Pining for the UPS truck. <laughs> And he's, he's at 338, he uh, just responded to me and said, not yet. So okay. it'll get there. Yes, it will. As other people yeah. mentioned in the feed here. This More is exciting your... than when your children are born. <laughs> the missus is out of the office today. I can say things. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man, it is raining like crazy up here. How's it down in your neck of the woods, Scott? Uh, clear blue sky. Wow. We're so only Dave about 20 miles apart. In, in theory, we both live in Houston. Yeah, uh, I live I live uh, just off downtown, and Dave lives what twenty miles north of me. Yeah, about about twenty even. Yeah, and then our offices are twenty miles south of me. So imagine the commute. For me. I, I drive all the way through downtown Houston four times a day. It's something. Yep. Mm. Maybe I can catch up to this. Boy, we are really into the cilantro and yeah, coriander. the cilantro and, and coriander, and eventually we get into fennel and I see black beans. Love fennel. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Uh, okay, so at 310, Kevin Lopez missed the Wireshark live stream. So yeah, we've done a bunch of Wireshark labs. I've done one almost every week since we started. Right. And three weeks ago, we did a Wireshark installation, which is a really, really, really easy thing to do. Um, it's one step. If you want to launch it from the command line, you don't have to do anything. If you want to launch it from the graphical user interface, there's one additional step, and we cover that in that live stream. So check that guy out three weeks ago, and he'll give you that. So the second half of this question yeah. is, yeah. is it also covered in Mike's A plus course? I would, I would say no. No. That it's definitely in his network plus course, because that's where we really get into packet sniffing and, and uh, network scanning and all that stuff. So right. yeah, but it's definitely in his, his network plus course. I've never seen in any of the courses in any of the video courses, he doesn't go through how to install it, but he does go how to use it. And he talks about popular filters and things like that. But installing it on a Windows machine is pretty much a one click event, just like installing any other application right. that you've ever installed. Right. And if you haven't played with it, get Wireshark now. Just, yep, just sure. download it right now and just start playing because it'll open your brain to what the TCP IP networks are actually doing. It's, it's a great tool. Uh, I have to see what Alice said. Oh, Alice, Alice is into coriander. <laughs> no, she doesn't like it. I think that's a sad face. Yes. And then tell it a couple lines later. Say it isn't so. Shame yep. on you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those. Has no one ones. mentioned Rosemary yet? As long as we're going to do that. <laughs> That'll be 40 comments coming up on Rosemary. I just set that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've caught up to Elbow's 18 wheeler thought. Okay. 311, Tullowit. Uh, passing 312 now. Morning Saint. I like pogo sticks. No soldering is great. I do too. Um, what's the right name for those? Isn't that pogo? Uh, there are uh, little pins that you can use to install into uh, the holes on circuit boards, uh, and they come in two flavors. One is you stick it up to the bottom and you solder it, and the other one is these pogo pins that have these little spring mounts that you can push in, and they'll grip onto the solder circles on either side of the hole. Not surprisingly, they're a little pricey compared to soldering a, a pin that costs a penny or two. Uh, these things can run upwards of 60 cents to a buck, but yeah, they're, they're good. They're not perfect. Uh, soldering is perfect. It's always a good connection when you solder it right and you never have to worry about it later. Pogo pins do wiggle and sometimes lose connection. One of Dave's uh, previous lives was as an electrical engineer. So just yeah, that's my you know. formal training. One of his many- <laughs> Tullow says, now I made him scroll back. <laughs> And he did. I did. Choco Taco, legal things. If, if that's a response to somebody else, cool. If it's not, can you fill that out? I will fill it out for you. While you were talking about that you had spent all week preparing for this, uh, the, the Plex yeah. uh, Cody integration that you were busily downloading legal things from legal places. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, in fact, I found an amazingly cool place for those of you into Movies and videos. Let me pull this uh, page up real quick. Man, I got a lot of hairy stuff going on. Looking, looking, stand by. I'll yeah. find it very quickly. Standing. Standing. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take over for a second. It's take me a minute to find. But just more food questions, the fennel or finuccio or Finuch in Jersey. <laughs> Tell him it was a, was a restaurant chef. So that's all these food things. Oh, it's got more weird background than I do. <laughs> Kudos to him between the army and other jobs and his chef. I remember his, yeah, talking about chef in early days. So Greg Davis at 315 asks about the Plex free version versus the paid version. Okay. And what are the advantages of the paid version? Do you have that off the top? Yeah, of if you remember the answer, go ahead and take it. And if not, I will do it. Uh, it's publicdomainmovies.com. Cool place. 
publicdomainmovies.com. Yeah. Um, and before I answer Greg's question, let me uh, mention something about that. Uh, when I was over in Saudi, uh, it took a while to, you know, kind of meet some folks and, and find social outlets and things like that. So I bought off of some website uh, a big collection of movie genres that I love. Uh, old B, black and white horror movies and things like that. Uh, and I found that they were everywhere. And it turns out, having looked at this, and, and perhaps I learned a little earlier, is there's a whole bunch of those old great horror movies and zillions of other movies from the 20s through the 50s that have moved into the public domain. So people take them and they package them and they sell them on a DVD or a Blu-ray or whatever. But you know, what a great site to get your own. How fun. Okay, uh, premium plex versus non-premium plex. Only one difference. Uh, okay. And that is premium has a streaming audio service. So they got to pay all the, the streaming sources and things like that. So you wind up paying for that. Other than that, they're the identical product. Sorry, I got to get my page back up to find everybody. There we go. What was the time stamp on that? Uh, 3.15. Okay. And apparently we have the public domain movies URL incorrect. Well, that wouldn't be my first time. I was doing it by memory and going with a 99% chance that I was right. It, it's weird. I had the, doesn't matter. Somebody Google it. You'll find it. Okay. I see the Pinocchio or Pinocchio. Did something good happen, Morning Saint? Everything good happened. You showed up here. Your, your life got better. Uh, let's see if we can get this kind of wound up and cover the important questions in the next 10 minutes and then start Thanks, working Chaco. shut down. Thanks, Ch Chaco, for the uh, uh, correct URLs, publicdomainmovies.net. Thank you. I, I've added that link since I'm the only one who can actually add links in the chat. Why not? Clickable. Alice Ponzi, Doc Savage Details. We talked a little bit about that on Monday. Scott and I are both Doc Savage fans, kind of a, a pulpy superhero -y type from the 60s and early 70s and one really bad movie made about him <laughs> this was pre uh decent special effects uh certainly pre-cgi and and when you're dealing with a 1930s era almost superhero not having good special effects means wow yeah we're and we're we're, we're spoiled but I, can you, I can tell you this in 1974 it was still bad <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Uh, 321, John Lehman, regarding TV seasons, you may want, uh, you may add on, do you still have to manually put in uh, S01, E01, so season one, episode one, format in the final name? You know what I learned this week? There is an ISO, an industry standard method of naming downloaded shows, uh, and they include all kinds of fields in there, including with shows, yes, the S01, E01, that's included in there. Uh, so, language is included there using a, an ISO identifier, EN or SE or JP or whatever. So you still have to do it manually? Uh, again, the system may auto detect and add for you, but if it doesn't, then you do. Okay. Someone downvoted the stream. Hey, that happens. I'm not an attractive guy. <laughs> Yes, Andy saw my flash of lightning. It was big. I haven't seen one since then. <laughs> <laughs> reading, reading. I'm passing right, right. nine. The picture of Ice Cream Man is creepy. Yes. It I really agree. is creepy. So I, that was one of the first movies that I just said, if there's a movie I can download. Uh, it was an indie film, and I looked at it for a couple of minutes, and it looks creepy. <laughs> oh, hey, see, I thought it was nice the, to uh, see, buddy. Thank video. you for the nice compliment. I thought it was the Van Halen video. <laughs> and nobody's mentioned Clapton and Winwood. So. No, I'm, I was going to ask you. Tell us <laughs> about your t-shirt, man. Clapton and Winwood, Really, 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 really good show. But then I almost don't go to shows that aren't. I think I've been that before. It's not bad if I remember. Okay. And I'm constructed <laughs> entirely out of pies. Well, there was a time when I... Could have been accused of being constructed entirely out of pie, but I'm being good. 
335 exabytes, well into the exabytes for ext4. Somebody looked that up. Max, right. so Max the uh, television has a question on at 334, just before the exabyte comment yep. about roll 20 in Brave. Are you familiar with that? I'm not. Neither am I. So I can't answer you. Okay. Okay. Saving the comment for research. Right. Control C, Notepad, save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell it. It's for all those uh, legal movies that Dave is downloading. That's why he needs a legal team. Trust me that I would not have done anything illegal for this show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Make no commitments above and beyond what I do in my real life. Man, you're not kidding. Uh, Morning Saint, we're living on the edge in 2020. We have a, a saying at the office, a couple of them, but one of them is it's great to live in the future, to be able to do what we just did with such simple and, and easy to access stuff is incredible. So we're, uh, we're just kind of cruising through the questions. So I'm kind of skipping over the, uh, uh, all the food comments. Greg, 342, I'll, I'll add to that. Uh, okay. Greg has rosemary trees in his backyard. I have a neighbor who has a humongous rosemary bush and they hate rosemary and beg <laughs> us, come over and peel the rosemary. Wow. I'm there all the time. Kevin Lopez. Oh, wow. You, uh, you hit on something really interesting and good here. Uh, any opinions on IT boot camps in particular? I saw one by Flatiron School. Uh, figured it should be first focus. So I talked to Mike the other day. We were talking about things that he's going to do as feature presentations and in the future. And he told me that he's going to take on uh, boot camps. And in general, don't expect him to be a fan of them. They, there's a time and a place for them. If you have to achieve some accreditation, but not the expertise that that accreditation uh, implies, a boot camp is great. I used to teach boot camps uh, as a flight instructor for uh, ground school, weekend ground schools. So we would slam through in a day and three quarters everything you need to know to pass the test and hopefully a little bit above and beyond. And then at the end of the second day, everybody would take their test and most people would pass it. But it was always kind of our experience that anything you can learn in a day and a half, you can forget in a day and a half. And so they were useless and, and hopeless when it came to applying or remembering that information when we put them in airplanes and boot camps are often the same way. Yeah. And what, what we've uh, got experience from several people who are, have done these uh, tech or IT certification boot camps, and they tend to be wildly expensive, like many, many thousands of dollars with no guarantee of jobs. So it sounds, sounds to me more like a more like a scam than something good. You'd be probably better off buying some equipment yourself and just studying on your own, uh, getting Mike's videos, um, you know. But yeah, it's not like I haven't taught a lot of boot camps, but. Right, we've done some and we've had successful people, but our audiences are kind of specifically created for these boot camps. They're, they're type A super studiers, monster people who want and need to learn the stuff. So at 340, John Lehman, has a question that we skipped. Um, yeah, being that. techie men, it's like army men only wear techie men. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what are some reputable names in the field of consumer routers? Cisco, who no longer makes routers, but even their used ones are good. Asus makes very good routers these days. Yep. Trendnet, uh, Linksys, of course. Those which are the ones that come to my by, mind. Which is owned by Cisco. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, not anymore. Really? They split yeah. off? Yeah, yeah, they were spun off. I think they actually own, get ready to, to put the rope around uh, Buffalo. Yeah, I know. Wow. All right, we got about one more minute for questions. Oh, wow. Okay, it's already, good Lord, man. Yeah, it's 54. Time flies, huh? Yep. So let's see if we can find one or two good ones. Almost They're all 11. good. Let's see if we can find Food time is, okay, I, I agree. Food time, is it ever really over? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it's fun. 
Oh, good. Okay, well, I'm almost at the end here. EXT support, EXT4 supports two exabytes per elbows researched if, or his memory. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's monster. It, it's not, it doesn't have all the benefits of NTFS, but when it comes to capacity, rawr. So, um, you just learned that yesterday. Cool. Good. There's, there's one, one question popped. Uh, where was it? I already missed it. Ian did a cert boot camp. Hey, yep. Ian, nice to see you, buddy. Ian's with us. He edits and writes and does and is a technical whiz. Uh, the, the cert boot camp he did did not go well in his experience. But he got a grant, so it's okay as long as somebody else pays for it. Right. <laughs> Fourteen grand for six certs. Wow! Wow, that's a lot. Uh, Morning Saint at three fifty three. Agree with Dave that employers are going to be apprehensive due to the amount of comments that I've read in forums. But for entry level, he thinks it's fine. Okay, to each his own. Okay, and, and Tello would explain what Roll20, of course, duh, it's a D&D &D thing. So oh. it's, it's online rolling rolling dice. Okay, man, I haven't been there in, in so long. My friends still play oh. every Tello week. points out ubiquity, right? We're ubiquity in the office. So yep. we got Hey, I made it to the end of the questions, uh, scribbling them all down from John Lehman. So cool, it's 56. Let's do a little wind up here. A reminder, next week, I'm going to do basic bash shells. I'm going to do another protocol of the week. And then the uh, the big new project, we're doing pie hole. Should go fine in one stream. But if not, we'll stretch it into a second stream. So, so let's make that a little more exciting. Tell yeah. them what a pie hole does. Exactly. So you know right now how your computer makes a DNS call to your Soho router, and it in turn makes a DNS call to your ISP's primary DNS, or maybe you've overridden that and you're making calls to Google's public domain server. Cool. Well, when all that junk comes back to you, a whole bunch of adware comes back to you too. That's how ads get incorporated into websites. So what Pihole does is it becomes your new primary DNS server. You'll contact it so it's going to add an extra step, but it's fast. You'll never feel it. It will contact the same stuff in the same order. And when the response comes back, Pihole filters out many, many, many of the ads that are incorporated into websites. It, it just, it's fast. It's unbelievable. As I said, you can't feel it. And what you have to do is once you've got it set up and running, you go to each of the computers in your house and or your office and you change the primary DNS server from your Soho router to the IP address of the Pi hole. Simon sighting or somebody sighting. No, that sounds awesome, Dave. I'm totally yeah. looking forward to Friday. Yeah, I think Scott, fact, uh, Mike is planning on checking in and if he doesn't get to it, I'm just gonna make him a micro SD card and he can plug it into his machine and just make two changes. Sounds great. All right, so remember, uh, we got specials. On the super bundles for A plus and Net plus, 50% off. For Sec plus on the bundle, that's uh, Total Tester and the videos. Use the checkout code MM Live 831. That was the date on Monday. Good for two more days. Check in with Scott or I at Scott J at TotalSem.com. Dave R at TotalSem.com. Hey, I covered all the ground. I think we have. So yeah, thank you all so much for playing and thanks Dave for having some good presentations and showing us the combined awesomeness of Cody and Plex. Likewise, can't wait to do Cali now, now that somebody's reminded me of that. Uh, that doesn't have to be too far in the future because it's just a software install. So we can have a ton of fun with that. That sounds great. We still sounds got great. one more minute, yay. Case sensitive, everything is case sensitive in Linux morning saint. This, this is true. <laughs> uh, Thank you all for coming. Thanks to Mike for allowing us to, to use this time period for you every Friday. If you've got a holiday this weekend, please enjoy it safely. Have three days. And for the rest of you who are working Monday, 
you know, come to America. We get this money. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud, did I? <laughs> no, I'm coming. I'm back. I'm going to Europe with 10 weeks of vacation, man. This two weeks is nice. but with no place to go. 10 weeks of sitting at the house. And when you're normally sitting at the house, maybe not that big of a deal. Hey, we're on the hour. Let's ask oh. Michael to pull the big plug on us. And we yeah. will see you Monday for the regular AMA with Mike. All right. Sounds great. Bye. Night.